There's a lot that goes into crafting a logo. From a design perspective, creating a logo for a brand or a video game title itself means capturing the essence of what that company or story is about. It's tougher than it looks. Over the years in the video game industry, there's been plenty of logos that have become household icons, and many of them have a story behind why they look the way they do. So today, we're diving deeper into these stories of these logos and company names with our list of the top 10 secret meanings behind famous video game logos. At number 10, we've got Ubisoft. The current Ubisoft logo is meant to represent the company's touch of madness. Well, what does that mean? So, for context, the early days of Ubisoft's logo were a little bit odd, or rather, are odd now, and feel super retro. Ubisoft was created in 1986 in Brittany, France, and finished their first game, Zombie, in 1987. The word Ubi in Latin means where, and is supposed to be a take on software. Back in those days, the Ubisoft logo felt a lot like the old MTV logos, since it's changed its logo only three times, with the last being a minimalist approach. The company has stated that the swirl and the letter O are both deliberately created to be reminiscent of hand-drawn shapes that represent their human qualities of enthusiasm, curiosity, and the grand default that Ubisoft is known for. Grand default translates into touch of madness. My apologies to our French fans out there that no, I just butchered that phrase. And at number 9, we've got Konami. Since its creation in 1981, Konami has gone through five different logos over the years, but its first was simply its name, with a slight curve at the bottom of the K. The company originated in 1969 as a jukebox rental and repair business, and the name itself was made up of three individuals who ran it. Hajimasa Kazuki is the KO, Yoshinobu Nakama is the NA, and Tatsu Miyasako is the MI. Up next at number 8, we've got Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog's logo is an amalgamation of founders Andy Gavin and Jason Rubin's collective efforts since 1984 when they first started the company, which was called Jam Software at the time. In September 1989, they changed the company's name to Naughty Dog, but still kept the same Jam aesthetic. They cycled through a few different logos, one graffiti inspired, one with three different typefaces, and another featuring a mascot of a dog with the word Naughty written on its shirt, spelled N-A-W-T-Y. But in 1996, after releasing Crash Bandicoot for the PlayStation, the branding grew up a bit and matured into the logo known today. And a few years later, that proved to work for them, because the company was bought by Sony in 2001. And at number 7, we've got Xbox. The story of Microsoft's Xbox dates back to 1998, when four engineers working at the company's DirectX team started playing around with a prototype for the first Windows-based video game platform. This platform would become the Xbox, a new direct competitor with industry giant PlayStation. But before infamous marketing agency Wonderman put together the now iconic Green X logo, the console's original logo was a little less sleek, and a little more 90s in its early days before hitting the market. Up next at 6, we've got Sega. Sega didn't always have the name we know now. Originally, it was founded as Standard Games in 1940 by a trio of American businessmen in Honolulu to provide coin operated amusement machines to military bases for those stationed to have something to do in their leisure time. Now, after World War II, they sold their company and it became Service Games, which was later shortened to Sega in 1965, since it's had over a hundred variations crafted of its logo, with many of them incorporating some of Sega's more memorable properties, including Sonic the Hedgehog, their second and most well known mascot, who, in the 90s, they tended to include in all of their games, even the ones not starring him. Yay, Easter eggs. And up next at number 5, we've got the Assassin's Creed logo. Assassin's Creed made a pretty big splash in the world of gaming when its first title was released back in 2007. The logo has become quite memorable, and anyone with any knowledge on gaming is likely familiar with its triangular shape. It's a logo that has a lot of importance in the world of the game itself. The insignia is used to mark entrances to various important Assassin's necessities, like headquarters, the Assassin's Bureau, and the Assassin's Tombs. But in the real world, the logo was designed to represent an eagle's skull, pictured from behind, with an eagle according to the developers, being a bird of prey animal that sums up the predatory and often aerial nature of the assassins themselves, along with the motifs of courage and freedom that the Assassin's Creed lore itself often boasts. And our number 4 spot is Atari. The Atari logo was created by George Opperman, the company's very first in-house graphic designer. His goal with the logo was to achieve two things, that the silhouette of the whole logo was to look like the letter A, for Atari, and that its three prongs were based off of Atari's first groundbreaking game, Pong. The outside lines represent two players, and the middle line is for the line that splits the pong court in the game. It's also worth noting that the logo has gotten praise for resembling Mount Fuji, which is often believed to have been the intention behind the logo itself, but it wasn't. <laughs> Up next, number 3, PlayStation. The PlayStation logo is the perfect example of how much goes into crafting a logo. The now iconic upright P and horizontal S went through multiple iterations before designer Manabu Sakamoto and Sony settled on a final look. With at least 19 other options, there were a lot of ideas on the table before settling with the logo we're familiar with today. In addition to that, the PlayStation controller also has an interesting meaning. 
meaning. The triangle, square, circle, and X buttons all mean specific things, with the triangle referring to viewpoint, the square being a piece of paper, and the X and the circle buttons standing for yes and no. And at number two, we've got Sonic. Hirokazu Yashuhara and Naoto Oshima revealed during a talk at the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco what the origin of Sonic's logo was, and it was pretty compelling. Oshima had made up a backstory for Sonic that was never part of the official Sonic story that Sega released. In Oshima's fictional story, Sonic wasn't a real character at all. He was created by a pilot who was known for going fast, who had painted his plane's nose to look like a hedgehog. The pilot would eventually marry a children's author who created Sonic the Hedgehog, and the emblem was on the pilot's jacket, hence why the design of the emblem in real life has a touch of aviation to it. And finally, in our number one spot, Nintendo. It wasn't until the 1960s that Nintendo embraced Roman script for their logo to be more understandable for its Western audiences. Prior to that, it had a bit of an identity crisis, with many variations of its logo, the earliest being three kanji symbols. Now this is where it gets really interesting. It's often believed that Nintendo's name means leave luck to heaven, but its history of being a playing card company may have proven otherwise when it comes to translating the meaning behind its name in Japanese. With origins rooting back to the late 19th century, the company was originally the Nintendo Playing Card Co., the latter half of the name being dropped in 1963. They sold playing cards when they first came into fruition, and when sales started to decline in 1889, they started to make lower quality cards, which they sold under the name of Tengu, a word often associated with illegal gambling. In the book The History of Nintendo, 1889 to 1980, Florence George and Isao Yamazaki examine a century worth of information about the company and break down what the Japanese characters could have meant in the context of their playing card past, that is. Nin standing for chivalry, or referring to duty, Ten standing for Tengu, and Do being associated with shrine or sanctuary, which companies often added to the end of their names to give themselves prestige. When two Yakuza members were asked their take on the Nintendo title by Tokyo Vice writer Jake Adelstein, they both had similar responses. Nintendo comes from Ninkoyo and refers to the concept of chivalry and crime. Adelstein explains, I quote, The Yakuza don't think of themselves as criminals because they argue that they are Ninkoyo Dante, aka humanitarian groups. So yeah, Nintendo could mean that they're, you know, boasting their crime rep. No big deal. Alright, there we have it, friends. Did you guys know of any of these stories of these logos? Are there other cool stories that we should have included on this list? Let us know in the comments below. If you dug this video, please show us some love by hitting those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our channel for more great gaming videos. We got a ton of awesome ones in the playlist that's right up on your screen right now. In the meantime, thanks for watching everybody. Catch you all in the next one.